wherever we are, can we just lift our voices to God and say, Father, send your word to me tonight. It's a very simple prayer. Send your word to me. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Open my heart to receive. In the name of Jesus. Just pray, pray, pray. With all sincerity, pray. That Lord, we open your eyes to see. Yeah, we open your ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. I want to specially thank everyone. Thank you for supporting us. Those who are, you know, adding people to the group, sending, you know, sharing our short videos for people to be blessed, sending books, sending links to of libraries, whatever you are doing as a part of what God is doing through us, God sees you. And the same God that sees you will reward you in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, for those of you who have not registered for investor of discipleship, God is raising men. God is building men. God is transforming men. Be part of this school. And of course, you are not going to regret your choice. In the name of Jesus, to everyone who have been sending their tokens, those who are partnering with us, you know, with the, with the, you know, with the little the Lord has given to them, and for those who are sending their tithes, you know, their offerings, thank you so much. We are praying for you, and it is our desire from the Lord that the same God who has helped you even to do what you are doing, we establish you. Yes, it will establish you in the truth. Our prayer for you is that you will be established in the truth. Yes, that's our prayer for you. Our prayer for you is that you will stand and not fall. Yes, you will, you will be the model for your own territory. When they are looking for God in your territory, it is you they will come and pick. Yes, and I know that this prayer will be answered. Thank you so much for believing in us. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing through us. God bless you. So I do not want us to join the world because the world, you know, they are actually ignorant of the truth of God. So you see the worldly people coming to you and say, all men are evil. Another person will come and say, all, all, all ladies are liars. They are, they are devils. It's not true. It's not true. When you begin to generalize weaknesses, you are displaying your ignorance. Are you there? You cannot assume that all the genders are evil because you met one Jezebel. Jezebel is a female. Esther is also a female. Don't forget that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Delilah is a female. Deborah is a female. What's the difference? They have they are of the same gender. They have the same physical features. But the difference is the fear of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So who is a good man? A good man is the one is that man that has the fear of God. Who is a good sister? A good sister, a good woman is that one that has the fear of God. So the goodness in us is sponsored by the fear of the Lord. Why am I emphasizing on the fear of the Lord? I want you to know what is making you good. Humans are not naturally good people including the person speaking to you are you getting what i'm saying the reason we do good as instructed by the spirit of god is the fear of god that we have so there is no christian without the fear of the lord as a matter of fact what to look forward to in anyone who refer to his or herself as a christian is the fear of the lord all right, for some weeks now, we have been considering um, the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth. And um, tonight, we are going to continue from chapter 4. Um, now, chapter 4 from verse 1. Before I begin to read from verse 1, I'm going to do a summary of what we did in the last teaching. For those of you who have been following the teaching, um, we you will notice that we have, by the Spirit of God, explained what happened when Ruth went to Boaz. She, you know, she slept very close to him, and then nothing happened. And then when Boaz woke, you know, he, you know, he did what he is supposed to do. Boaz did not rape Ruth. Are you there? Boaz was a man that feared the Lord. A man that feared the Lord. 
Are you there? It is hard for you to see something like that happen in this kind of civilization where you have a brother and a sister in the same room and nothing will happen. It's, it's rare. It's rare. You see, there is no good brother, there is no good sister. Are you there? What makes us good is the fear of the Lord. If you remove the fear of the Lord from a man, it becomes bad. If you remove the fear of the Lord from a woman, she becomes bad. So, Boaz slept with Ruth in the same chamber over the night and nothing happened. Nothing happened. As a matter of fact, the next morning, Boaz stood, you know, and gave some gifts to, to Ruth, measured some, you know, some food items for her to take home. Ruth was expecting Boaz to just, you know, just marry her like that. But Boaz said, no, no, there's a king's man that is closer than high. Let me meet with that person. If that person says no, that he is not interested in marrying you, then I can now take step. That is a godly man. Are you getting it? That is a man that has the fear of the Lord. Selfishness is a sign that the fear of the Lord is missing. A selfless man is actually showing, is, is actually verifying the fear of the Lord that he has. He's proving it. One of the ways to show that you, you fear the Lord is selflessness. A man that fears the Lord is ready to do a lot of things without necessarily expecting gain from it. Of course, Ruth was a beautiful woman. Boaz should have just said, wow, this is an opportunity, and just rape her. And nothing will happen because Boaz, of course, Boaz is a rich person, you know, is a rich man. But the fear of the Lord will constrain him. There are many things we can do, both good and evil. Everybody listening to me now, we know how to steal. <laughs> There's nobody that cannot steal. We know what to... You don't need somebody to teach you, okay, this is how to steal. We all know how to steal. You don't need anybody to teach you, okay, this is how to lie, this is how to lie. We all know how to do those things. But why are we not doing it? The fear of the Lord constrains us. That's it. Are you there? I'm emphasizing on the fear of the Lord as one of the major things we should learn from Boaz. And that's one of the things you must keep as a child of God. You are not a Christian because of the clothes you wear, the things you put on your head. You are a Christian because of the fear of the Lord that you have. If you lose it, you have lost something tangible. All right, let's go to verse 4, um, the book of Ruth, chapter 4 from verse 1. Now, after the conversation ended, then Boaz, let's look at the next step that Boaz took. Remember, Boaz was a very rich man, very rich man. He was a wealthy man. I think that's the best way to, to qualify him. The book of Ruth, chapter 4 from verse 1. Then went Boaz, hop to the gate, and sat him down there. And behold, the king's man of whom Boaz spoke came by, unto whom he said, Oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. Remember I told you, if you check the, the last chapter, chapter 3, you discover that Boaz was, when Boaz was speaking to Ruth, he said, there's a king's man that is closer than her. Let me talk to that one. If he's not ready to marry you, then I will not marry you. But I can't break the rule. It is the fear of the Lord that makes you observe the rules. It is the fear of the Lord that brings obedience. You see, for a man that fears the Lord, obedience to godly instruction is natural. If you don't fear the Lord, obedience is the hardest thing to do. As a matter of fact, to obey, it will look like somebody telling you to go and die there are some people if you ask them to to be obedient to godly instruction what they will be hearing is go and die go and die because to them obedience is 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 next to impossible 
So Ruth, you know, Boaz, I mean, immediately after that conversation in verse 4, in chapter 4 from verse 1, he went, the Bible says he went up to the gate. He went to the place where he can see that person. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when he saw the man, he beckoned on him. Ah, please come. There's something to discuss. Now, let's go to verse 2. And he took ten elders, and he took ten men of the elders of the city, and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. Can you see Boaz now? That is the wisdom of God. He did not only speak to the man alone. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says he took ten elders. So they were they, they are now twelve. Boaz, the man that is closer, you know, that is more closer than Boaz, you know, to, to Naomi, and the ten elders. Why? He brought the ten elders so that they can serve as witness. Because if the man says he's not marrying Ruth and Boaz marries Ruth, it can become, you know, something that will lead to conflict in time to come. So he, he called elders. Can you see that? He called elders to the meeting. Meaning he was willing to seek counsel. Are you getting what I'm saying? A man that fears the Lord will be humble enough to take counsel. There are so many things we can learn from here. Boaz did not just call the man and say, okay, sit here. Uh -huh, there's one, there's one woman. No. You, Maria. You know the way we do things in this wicked world? Very, very, very deceptive, very subtle way. Yeah, there's one there's one woman who is her name is Ruth. The woman is not even she's not even fine. Oh god. When I even saw her, I felt like vomiting. So that that one will say no and he will go and marry. No, but Boaz did not do like that. Boaz did not follow that dubious mate. He called the man, and not only that, he called ten elders to be there. To serve as what? Number one, to serve as witness, and number two so that they can also give counsel when you see a man that is not ready to take counsel you advise him he's not taking it you give instruction in godliness he's not taking it instruction in righteousness he's not obeying she's not ready to listen people like that they lack the fear of god because one of the things that the fear of, of the lord we we walk out from you is humility and it takes humility for you to submit because you cannot take instruction without first submitting to the instructor are you with me you cannot take instruction without first submitting to the instructor so that means boaz called the elders because he was ready to submit to them to take instructions from them you know before we ask the question can i do it I think we need to ask, should I do it? Because there are some things that you can do that you should not do. Obviously, we know Boaz is even more richer than this man. And yet, Boaz, we know Boaz was not willing to cheat him. Boaz knew by right that this person has right to root more than he does. And he was willing to tell the man. Because he knows, Boaz knows by law, that he cannot marry Ruth, even if he desires to. Can I tell you something? Boaz already knew, you know, the kind of woman that Ruth was. Boaz, Boaz knew that Ruth was a virtuous woman. He knew that, you know, Ruth was a very good woman, a woman that fears the Lord. But this other man did not even know much about Ruth. So all these good things that Boaz knew about Ruth is enough to, you know, to make him become Kana and just want to, you know, you know marry her by force. But he did not do that. Are you getting what I'm saying? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The word beginning means foundation of wisdom. Don't tell us you are wise. Are you there if you don't have the fear of God? How can you say you have wisdom when you don't have the foundation? Because according to the scriptures, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. What does that mean? What to look out for? In a man, in a woman, in a girl, in a boy, in a brother, in a sister, that has the wisdom of God is the fear of God. 
It is first fear before wisdom. Are you there? You cannot carry the wisdom of the personality you don't fear. And this fear I'm talking about is not negative. It's in the place of reference, submission, honor. Are you getting what I'm saying? Service. You know, there's so much to learn from the life of Boaz. So much to learn. You know, I want to go to verse 3, but the, the Lord is bringing me back to verse 2. The Lord is bringing, I'm, I'm being, you know, I want to go to the next verse. The Lord is, you know, the spirit of the Lord in me is, is constraining me. You have to go back. You have to go back. There's still more things to pick from here. There's still more things to pick from here. Boaz did not speak with the man alone. He called 10 elders with him. So instead of two people talking, they are now 12. Only a wicked man will not want to have a witness. When you know your hands are clean, you will not be scared of having witnesses around you. Somebody claims he loves you. Okay, okay. When when will you come and know my parents? He said, hey, don't worry. You know, let's just be doing it secretly. Not secretly. You better be wise. Learn from Boaz here. One of the signs to show that the relationship is a serious relationship is that your parents are involved. Any relationship you engage in that your parents are not aware of is hide and seek. It is not yet approved. Are you with me? Somebody say, eh, what if I what if I tell my what if I tell my father and the Lord? And what if I go and tell my mentor? <laughs> You see, there are two people that must that you must inform your parents, your father, and the Lord. Are you there? Or whoever your disciple or your mentor is, they should be aware. Are you there? But don't tell your mentor, your father, and the Lord, and then think that is all. No. On the wedding day, it's not your father and the Lord that will come and sit there. It's your biological parent that will sit there if they are still alive. You have to be wise. The Bible says wisdom is profitable for direction. Are you getting what I'm saying? So your parents must be aware. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is wisdom. Let's learn from Boaz. He called the elders. The elderly ones was aware. They, you know, they were aware of the discussion. So whatever happens in that, whatever is the conclusion of that discussion, the elders are also aware of it. This is something to learn from. Now let's go to verse 3. And he said unto the king's men, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother's, Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants, before the inhabitants, and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it but if thou will not redeem it then tell me that i may know for there is none to redeem it beside beside thee and i and i am and and, and i am after thee and he said i will redeem it now look at this boaz started with a parable he said well um you know when naomi came there's this piece of land that they want to sell you know they want to give out are you interested the king's man said oh a piece of land of course i'm interested and let's see what happens verse 5 then said boaz what day thou buyest the field of the hand of naomi thou must buy it also of roots the moabite the wife of the dead to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance and the king's man said i cannot redeem it for myself lest am i my lest i ma mine lest, lest i ma or lest i destroy my own inheritance redeem thou my right to thyself for i cannot redeem it can you see that bo has now said now it's fine if you say you want to get that inheritance that land is good but if you are getting the land though please make sure Take note, you will also have to take root because 
this woman the husband died without leaving a seed so you have to raise a seed from the woman the moment that man heard, he said no no i'm not ready to to raise seed for any man that any any anybody oh, please i'm not interested i don't need the land again if you want take over can you see that you see in those days when um you see in those days when when a lady marries when a lady marries and the husband dies without any any child they 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 will want to marry the woman out to another man so that the dead husband can have a seed this is how it works if a man marries a woman and the man dies without any child and another man marries that woman the first child that that woman gives birth to will be seen you know will be will be seen as the dead husband's son for ex for example if this widow now give birth to um four children it is the it is the last theory that will be seen as the man's own that first one is for the husband that died i think what i'm saying that is why most men they do not want to always marry a widow because especially when the husband have not you know uh, you know especially when the the woman have not given birth before the husband that because they feel like they cannot raise a seed for somebody that is dead they feel like it, it is it is it is a waste of time nurturing a, a, a child that you know the the the, the family of the dead husband will later come and carry away. Are you seeing what are you seeing the mystery now? So this is why this other king's man that is supposed to marry Ruth said no. He was not willing to how will I show that responsibility to be a father of his son that uh, later the family will come and say this is this is the child of um, the husband that died. No, me, I'm not ready for that. Are you there? It would therefore mean that in those days. It will even take the fear of the Lord to marry a widow. Because you know that the first seed is not your own, though it is your whatever that is producing it. But by law, the first seed is for the dead husband. So meaning that Boaz, he understood this law. And because of the fear of the Lord, he was willing to raise a seed for Ruth's dead husband. If you are a Bible, you know, if you are, you know, if you are a Bible reader, you will discover that something like this happened between the children of Judah. And that was why the Lord killed them. The Lord said because they did something. The first one, Er, was killed by the Lord. The, what did they do? He, he will go and sleep with the woman. When it's time to, you know, do what he's supposed to do that will impregnate the woman, he will stand up, spill it to the ground, and continue. He was just having sex for pleasure. He did not want to raise... A seed for Tama. I think the, the name of the wife is it Tama or something. Are you getting what I'm saying? And because of that thing that he did, the Lord killed the Lord killed the sons. The second son came to, he did the same thing. When it's time to release to the woman, he will stand up, spill it on the ground, continue having the, the pleasure of sex, and God killed those people. Are you are you getting what I'm saying now? So this act that Boaz was willing to to, to undergo. Is still a sign that he feared the Lord. You see, if there is anything you will learn from tonight's Bible study, it must be the fear of the Lord. That's one thing you must learn from tonight's Bible study. Okay, let's continue from verse 7 now. Now, this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeem, redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore, the king's men said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in those days, um, when, when they are reaching a, a kind of agreement, they will put off their shoe. So that raising that shoe shows that, okay, you have agreed and I have agreed. So at the point where the other man said, I'm not interested, I, no, 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 I can't, no, I can't raise the seed through roots, never. No, no, I can't do that. Boaz was willing to do that. And the implication is that Boaz will not have to marry Ruth. 
So in order to show that both of them have agreed, the man put up his shoe, Boaz also removed his shoe. Because in those days, that was a sign to show that an agreement has been, um, has been made. All right, let's continue. Verse, verse 8. Therefore the king's men said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witness this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Shilion and Malon of the hand of Naomi. Can you see that? It, it will mean that it is not only the elders and the two of them that were there. Let me show you the proof. If you look at verse 9, let me read verse 9 again. The Bible says, And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people. So there is there is elders are you there there is also another set of people called all the people meaning that boaz strategically placed that discussion in a place where people can gather are you there you see when you see people doing hide and seek don't, don't let anybody know i love you ah no I, it's you i will marry but please don't tell anybody all these things is fake no ah, no no the brother is a christian brother it is fake. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, <laughs> as far as relationship is concerned, even when by instruction, um, you know, the Lord has told you not to make it public, you know, just hide it. I, I, I speak to you in spirit and in truth. Even when God has given you instruction not to make it public, there are still some people that must be aware. At least your parents and your disciple must be aware. So Boaz went to the place where other people can see, can hear what they are discussing. The 12 elders were there, the two of them were there, and people also gathered around them to listen to what was happening. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't agree to go into any form of friendship, any form of secret friendship, secret relationship. Your future, your, your future is precious to God. Are you there? Your life is not just about you. There's so much God wants to do with you. You can't afford to, 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 to sell your future cheaply. That's why many glorious sisters are, you know, they are handing up their lives as, 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 as losers. Many of them are losing their self-esteem because they have been deceived. Maybe somebody is listening to me now and you are in that same shoe. And he has been telling you, don't tell anybody. But you know I love you now. We are Christians. I don't just want anybody to know. <laughs> the word of the Lord is coming to you tonight. It is not supposed to be like that. The elders must be there. Can you, you see, the, the other people that gathered, maybe they just gathered because of the discussions they, they had. Are you there? The presence of too many people is not, is not, is not really needed. But elders must be there. When I say elders, I'm referring to your parents, your disciples. They must be aware. Let's learn from Boaz. Are you there? Let us learn from Boaz. Moreover, verse 10 now. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon. Have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead? Can you see that? Boaz was willing to raise a seat for Malon, who was the husband of Ruth that died. Such a such a such a good man. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not be not cut off. From among the brethren and from the gates of his place. Ye are witness this day. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thy house like Rachel and like Leah, which with two did build the house of Israel. 
and do thou worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem and let thy house be like the house of Phares whom Tamar bear unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. Can you see that? What happened after that discussion? The people, the elders, they began to pray for Boaz. They began to release blessings into that family. May your wife be fruitful. May your family be like the family of Le- you know, You know, they began to release blessings. What can you learn from that? What can you learn from that? When you engage, you know, in the right relationship, when you, you know, in your relationship, when, when you, when you, when you ensure that those that should be aware are aware of it, one of the things you enjoy is blessings. Blessings from the elders. I tell you the truth in the Holy Ghost. There are certain things in this life that your skill cannot give you. There are certain things in this life that your connection cannot give you. There are certain things in life that what you have gathered cannot give you. And the only thing that can give it to you is the blessings of God. This is why you must not look down on blessings. Why must we honor elders? Because of the blessings they will release. You see, you know, somebody sent to an errand, you know, you stress yourself, you were stressing yourself, and finally you got the thing. When you got to the woman, you know, she just said, God bless you, and she did not even give you the change. And you went home, you were so angry. No, you are supposed to rejoice. You see, that blessings you have received will not finish. If she gives you money, the money will finish, probably that day. But you see, blessing, blessings does not end. It moves from generation to generation from generation to generation now i, I feel so, so, so you know i felt led in my spirit to to release blessings upon upon you know to just release some blessings tonight the lord has opened our eyes to see the importance of blessings so if you continue now before i before i release those blessings let's just look at the remaining verse um if you continue from verse 13 the bible says so boaz took Ruth. And she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare his son. Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is a function of the blessings of God. Immediately, Ruth gave birth. Why? Because there was a blessing on the union. There was a blessing on the union. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. For those of you that are married, the blessings of God rest upon your union. In the name of Jesus, every curses that has been placed upon you is taken away. In the name of Jesus, both the married and the unmarried, as you listen to my voice now, curses, every form of curses that you have, you have attracted to yourself due to one thing that you should not do that you have done tonight, the blessings of the Lord swallows them up in the name of Jesus. Starting from now, begin to walk in divine blessings. Be fruitful. Multiply in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful. Increase on every side in the name of Jesus. When you follow the right order, just like Boaz, in anything you are doing, whether you want to get a job, you want to, whatever you want to do, you want to go into a relationship, you want to do one thing or the other, if you follow the right order, you cannot miss the allocated blessings. Every step has a blessing attached to it. Every decision has a blessing attached to it. You want to get married, there's a blessing that is are located for marriage. Are you there? Oh, you have grown now to be mature. You want to stand alone. You want to leave your parents' house and go and rent a house. There's a blessing that is attached to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Every stages of life has certain blessings that is allocated to them. 
but we miss those blessings because we do not know how to follow the right order. So because you want to leave your parents' house now, you now fight with everybody. You left angrily. Don't you know because you are living angrily, you have left blessings? Many of you, you are in a relationship, but that relationship is under a curse. There's no blessings there. Because you did not follow the right order. Many of you, you have moved from one house to another, and in that new place, the house is good, but you, you are under a curse. Because you have refused to follow the right order. I'm going to pray for you as the Spirit leads me tonight. I need to, the, the Spirit of the Lord is leading me to release some blessings. Just pray in the Holy Ghost and charge up your spirit to receive by faith. Let's look at verse 14. The woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be God, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that, that his name may be famous in Israel, and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thy old age, for thy daughter-in-law, which loved thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath born him. Can you see that? It got to a point that, you know, the Bible was, you know, describing Ruth. Ruth was not the biological daughter of Naomi, but Ruth, because of her sacrifice, she, she, she got to that point that Naomi preferred Ruth to seven sons. Meaning that the love that Naomi now had for Ruth is greater than the one she had for her two sons, had it together. How? Sacrifice. Service. Service. I pray for somebody listening to me. From today, begin to walk in the blessings of God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are not cursed. You are blessed. Your generation is blessed. Everything that is connected to you is blessed. Every fruit that is come, that will come out from you is blessed. Your life is blessed. Your, your today is blessed. Your tomorrow is blessed. In the name of Jesus, every day of your life, you will enjoy the blessings of God. In the name of Jesus. Verse 16. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women and the women and neighbors gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. And now these are the generation of Perez. Can you see that? Look at this. That Obed that, that Ruth gave birth to now became the father of David. Who is David? The Bible describes David as the apple of God's eyes. Who is David? David was the greatest king in Israel. Can you see that? The blessings came upon the family. And through the blessings, Obed was born. And the blessing continued on Obed. Obed gave birth to, to David. The blessing continued on David. David gave birth to Solomon. Are you seeing that? Blessings does not end. Oh my God. I, somebody is listening to me now. By the Spirit of God, I bring you into generational blessings. The same way the blessing came upon Ruth, and the blessing followed Obed. It came upon David. It came upon Solomon. Your generation is blessed in the name of Jesus. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. From, oh my God, the Spirit of God in me is, you know, I, I, feel, I feel the Spirit of God in me ready to release some blessings tonight. Let your faith be alive. Let your faith be alive. Let your faith be alive tonight. There is something the Lord is about to release upon you. Let your faith be alive. Now look at this. The Lord showed us a mystery on the strength of this teaching we have just received. The people released blessings upon Boaz. And the Boaz and the blessings was resting on that family. When Ruth gave birth, she gave birth to Obed. Now Obed was the product of the blessing that was released upon that union. When Obed gave birth, he gave birth to David. David was the greatest king in Israel. 
<laughs> the blessing continued. The blessing was still following David. The blessing was still following David. When David gave birth, he gave birth to Solomon, the wisest king ever known, the richest king in history. The blessings of God. The blessings of God. I don't know for how long curses has been following you. Maybe somebody says something negative to your family and from generations. It has been following. That curse has been following. It, it has been following the, your family. Yeah, and, and now it's even following you. But tonight, an end has come to that. Because starting from this night, blessings begins to follow you. In the name of Jesus, blessings begins to follow you. Now look at this. I hear the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying that he's going to give you a new name. Now there's a blessing that's going to come upon your, your head tonight. There's a blessing that's going to come upon your head. Yes. Now, somebody's listening to me now on the strength of these declarations. There's a blessing that you begin to enjoy. Now, li listen to me. You see, when you are married, when you come into a relationship, there's a blessing that is attached to it. When you are married, there's a blessing that is attached to it. When you begin to become a mother, a father, and you are now nursing children, you are nurturing children, there's a blessing that is attached to it. If you are listening to me and you are a youth, there's a blessing that is attached to it. One of the blessings of being a youth is strength. The Bible says the glory of the youth is in their strength. So every stage, so if you are listening to me now, whether you are married, you are single, it doesn't matter your category, there's a blessing that is attached to that, your current state. And by the Spirit of God, the blessings attached to your current state begin to enjoy it now. In the name of Jesus. I said begin to enjoy it now. Begin to enjoy it now. Blessings receive. Blessings from the Lord. I bring you into God's eternal blessings. In the name of Jesus. Blessings begins to follow you. Blessings begins to follow you. Now, everything you touch is blessed. Everything you touch is blessed in the name of Jesus. Every generation that will come out of you is blessed in the name of Jesus. Your seed will be blessed. The seed of your seed will be blessed. The seed of your seed of your seed will be blessed. Every generation that is coming from you are declared blessed. In the name of Jesus, your generation will look at you and they will call you a blessing. In the name of Jesus. So therefore, by the spirit of the living God, I bring you by faith into God's eternal covenant of blessings. In the name of Jesus, come into God's blessings. Come into God's blessings. Come into God's blessings. In the name of Jesus. In the morning, you will be blessed. In the afternoon, you will be blessed. In the night, you will be blessed. Every day of your life, you will be blessed. Oh my God. Now, somebody is listening to me now. Now, please pay attention to this instruction. Pay attention to this instruction. Somebody is listening to me now. The Lord said, for you, He's going to show you a sign. He's going to give you a sign tonight. As you lay on your bed to sleep, He's going to give you a sign. And in that, in that, in that vision, you are going to see somebody coming to give you something. Something like a gift. Right there. That's the blessing. So, please pay attention to me. If you are the one that I'm talking to, you are going to know. By tomorrow, you will know because that thing, you, you are going to have that revelation. So the moment you, you, the Lord shows you that, just let me know. Are you getting what I'm saying? And for some of you, the Lord is going to uh, verify these things by, um, by creating a kind of atmosphere around you. Some of you, you are going to wake, you are going to wake up tomorrow morning, you are just feeling excited. Even somebody now, as I speak now, you'll notice this. Immediately after this meeting, you just suddenly get excited. 
Maybe something, maybe you are burdened before, but after the prayers, you just feel like you are light, you feel like you are excited. It's a sign that a blessing has come upon you. Please watch out for these signs. Whatever your own sign is, take note of it. But for some people tonight, you begin to, suddenly they'll just begin to feel happy. They begin to, they can't explain why they are happy. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's, your spirit is responding to that blessing. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will forever walk in God's blessings in the name of Jesus. Um, beloved of God, I would like you to know that uh, what you know does not make much difference. What makes the difference is what you do with what you know. Knowledge gathered is a waste if not put into use. So it is your ability to make use of this truth that you are getting that becomes uh, the proof of transformation. Do you understand? So don't just hear, are you there? Don't just write, don't just jot, don't just listen. Apply what you have heard to your life. That's where transformation is. You see, there's, there's the spiritual part of gleaning. Are you there? You see, you may not have all the spiritual gifts, but if you can glean, you can be blessed by all the spiritual gifts. That's the truth. You have this particular gift, and your friend have another one that you desire. If you can glean from him, if you can glean from her, you'll be blessed. Most of the time, we don't want to glean from others that have what we do not have because of pride. Gleaning now will now be submitting to them, you know, not necessarily submitting to them for maybe discipleship or mentorship, but being, you know, being willing to learn from them, being open to them, to learn, listen to what they are saying, learn. That's gleaning. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everyone that must benefit from a grace, especially the grace that he or she does not have, must learn to glean. You may not have all the spiritual gifts, but I can assure you, you can, you can be blessed by all of them if you learn to glean, if you humble yourself to learn from those that have what you don't have. That is what it means for a, a person's step to be ordered by the Lord. Naomi did not even know. She knows nothing about it. She was not given any description. She was just, you know, Ruth was just going with this passion that, I know I have to feed my, my mother. I have to feed myself. How we can't die of hunger. And God led her to the right place. You see, your passion to help others can become God's tool to help you. Some of us are not helped because we have not begun to, we don't have this passion to help others. You see, your passion to help yourself can keep you perpetually in a state of helplessness. That's the truth. Sometimes God wants to help you, but He's waiting for you to be for He's waiting for you to you know have this passion to help others. There are many things I've gotten in my life that I did not get them because I'm chasing them. No, I just got them because. I was trying to help others. So most of the time, there are things that God will not give you if he does not see your passion to help others. If he does not see your passion to bless others. God will not bless a man that is not passionate about blessing others. Now, that was why in the story of the rich man and Lazarus, you saw that Lazarus sat at the, table, at the rich man's table picking the crumbs. Those are part of the laws. As a rich man, if you are eating and a poor man comes, provided he's not constituting nuisance, he's not distorting anything. If a poor man comes and he wants to pick what has fallen from your table, he's allowed. That's part of the ways. Those are part of the rules that they have made to just help the poor. That's it. If you are, if you are a rich man, you are eating and a beggar is passing. By law, whatever they want to pick under your table, you should allow them. 
But there are some people who disobey this law. There's no penalty for disobeying. Anyways, but it has been made as, you know, the norms. Are you there? So those who are kind enough, you know, they don't find it hard to obey these laws. And that was why Naho, that was why Ruth said, okay, let me just find any farm so that I can glean. I pray that harvesting will have been done so that at least I can see some things to pick on the ground. Verse 6, And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the, mo it is the Mobitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. That means these people had already questioned Ruth when she came. Who are you? Please, you can't come to her. She said, please, I have a, you know, I have a grandmother at home. Her name is Naomi. Naomi. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Don't worry, be gleaning. Are you there? The people had already challenged him even before Boaz came. It was in the place of challenging, challenging her, I mean. It was in the place of questioning her that they got to know that, okay, okay, she came from Naomi. And that was why they allowed her. And you get what I'm saying? Okay. That's why it is good to be transparent. When people ask some details from you, when they ask to know about you, be, be, be real with them. Don't fake anything. Are you there? Just be real with them. Ruth was real. She did not say, well, it's not like I'm poor. I just came here. I came from, from, from Pratica now. I want to pick, I just want to pick some of these things uh, so that, uh, you know, when I get back to my place, you know, just to, you know, I want to use it to help the poor. She was frank. Sir, we don't have much, but I, I cannot do anything that is ungodly. That's why I've come to glean. Very sincere lady. Very sincere. And it was the same information she gave that was given to Boaz. So if she had lied now, they would have sent her away from that place. Nothing can be kept in deception. Maybe you are listening to me now and there's something you are keeping. There's something you are preserving with a lie. You kept on lying in that. You, you, you love God. But... There's this aspect of your life that you have been nurturing with a lie. You have been keeping with a lie. Nothing can be kept with deception. One day, exposure to the truth, everything will be open. Tonight is your night. You know, not everybody finds when they search. But a diligent person will always find when he searches. Why? Because he is careful, he is calm, he is observant, he is not distracted, he is focused. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So if you look at the statement here, at, the, at this point, even Ruth does not know where she's going to. Naomi did not give her address. She did not say, okay, go to where Boaz is. No. The Bible only told us that the husband of Naomi have a relative, a member of their family who is very rich, very wealthy, and his name is Boaz. That was all. So Naomi did not say, okay, go to where Boaz is. No. Ruth was just moving. Anywhere they will allow her to glean, that's where she will stay. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now look at this. You see, in the olden days, there are some rules that was made to help the poor. For instance, if you have a farm and you do harvesting, are you there? You are, you, you, you are expected to allow the poor come to your farm to glean, to pick the particles, the crumbs that falls to the ground. Whereas there are some wealthy people who are wicked who will not even allow the poor to glean. But, but you, are, you are supposed to, by, by law. In the olden days, now, if you plant something in your house and maybe your house is fenced, let's assume maybe it's a mango tree, and the mango grows and has branches, and the branches goes outside of your house. Are you there? By, by law, that part of the mango tree that goes out of your house belongs to the passerby. So when they are passing by, and you know, when the passerby sees that it is ripe, they can pluck and go. By law, it belongs to them. But they should not cross their boundary of trying to climb your fence, come to your house, no. But the part of the tree that extends 
beyond your fence outside belongs to the passerby. So there are there are a lot of rules in those days that makes it easy for the poor to survive, even when they do not have you know things to themselves. But those rules that were that were made helped them to survive. And one of the rules is gleaning. Gleaning. 